the destruction of all that we know will be brought about by pacts made with those who lurk amongst the stars. I, I think I got that right. Uh, those were the words that the prophet Bramante spoke, uh, which served as the basis for clusterism and fueled their hatred for us, our alien allies, and our way of life. In 2370, as you all know, our war with the Clusterists began. What should have been a swift and decisive victory against a lesser enemy was complicated by the bureaucracy back home in the Soul System. Nearly half of our government and the population they represent believed that for some reason, all of a sudden, this was an unjust war and not worthy of funding or support. So as a result, we're undersupplied and undermanned. As you also know, this conflict started because our dear allies, the Uro, had an existing claim on the clusterous colony of Terra Brea, and without their support, we would be hundreds of years behind in technology, and our colonies would quickly fail. You know, you've heard all of this on the news, folks. Uh, every day, the war's growing less popular, more difficult. God, you know this. I'm sorry, I'm kind of repeating myself, but I have to read this. Um, you know, we were given 13 years by the Uro to clear the planet. Uh, Terra Brea of the Clusterists, and it's been 10 years and 2 months since the start of the war, and we are only just now capturing the capital city. Uh, you know, this doesn't reflect on you guys at all, um, it's just uh, funding, really. Um, and, you know, we've been sending more soldiers back home, because we can't afford them, and now we have to root out an insurgency before the deadline is up, and that sucks. Uh, and if you're hearing this, it means that, you know, you're one of the lucky bastards who's gonna be rooting them out, so, uh, Keep your gear close and give them hell. Uh, thanks all. Hey, welcome to All That You Know, a Beam Saber actual play uh, pod podcast. Uh, you decide. Uh, my name is Colin, and I'm the GM for this series. Joining me today are Brian. Hi, I'm Brian. I'll be playing Hex, the bureaucrat. Zach, also known as Why Zach. I'm Zach. I'll be playing Geist, the ace. Ewan. Hi, I'm Ewan. I'll be playing Loyal, the empath. And Adam. I'm last. I'm Adam. I'll be playing Joseph, the infiltrator. Great. Usually, I would have you guys read your character beliefs about each other, but we're not going to be making those until the end of this mission, so let's get into it. Okay, narrative. So, following the taking of Brea City one month ago, the Soul Union has slashed the budgets of the peacekeepers on Terra Brea. A vast amount of machinery, soldiers, and resources have been recalled and are being sent home. The bureaucracy is pretending like the war is coming to an end and are making a show of it. With much of the general purpose staff and loaders already recalled, you've been asked to assist with loading up the last few shuttles prior to your briefing on your new squad. Some of the last few FDL-capable vessels are landed here in the makeshift spaceport in the center of Brea City. You all see somebody leaving that you know or knew. This is not someone on your character sheets or someone otherwise noted. It could just be like a cafeteria worker or a former squad mate or just like some guy you shared a drink with at some point. They might look back at you, maybe give you a shrug, a cheeky salute, or just a nod, but you get the feeling that you won't be seeing them again until this is over one way or another. As you finish loading up the supplies that you've been tasked to load, you all receive a notification to head to one of the administrative buildings for your briefing. You each arrive, with this being the first time you are seeing your new squad. Uh, each of you is sitting behind a placard on the table with your call sign in front of it. So let's go around and do a quick description of your looks and characters. And we'll start with you again, Brian. Hex, what do you look like? Hex appears to be a very inconspicuous office bureaucrat and visually really it matches that description. He stands at an average 5'8", with average brown hair and average brown eyes. With a stoic face, it doesn't look like he's the type of guy who would sign up for the squad, but nonetheless, here he is. Geist. Geist probably makes a little bit of a stir as he uh, enters the room. He is very obviously very heavily augmented. Uh, his arms and his legs are uh, bare metal cybernetics. Uh, you can kind of see there's not even in some places there's not really even any casing above it so you can kind of see the machinery whirring beneath he is wearing like a flight suit kind of over top of it but the sleeves are rolled up and it doesn't really fit very well for his head basically below his nose is some it's like partially like a facial prosthetic but also again not a very good fast meal he doesn't have like a mouth and when he speaks it the voice sounds kind of audio 
uh, modulated like it's from some sort of a synthetic speaker of some kind, although it does still sound like a human voice. And his scalp is uh, bare and on the left side, it has like a sort of like a webbing of burn scars, but he does still have some uh, hair on the right side of his face. He looks pretty gruesome, kind of kind of creepy. Did you play Knights of the Old Republic? I did. I'm getting Darth Malak vibes from this guy. Yeah, that definitely in the uh, the, the jaw, you know, the the jaw area. Yeah, he's kind of got that that similar thing going on. Mirage. Mirage is a robot. He is an emergent personality, class 2.5. Uh, he looks like a robot skeleton. Uh, he's thin and hollow. Uh, hollow enough that he could, like, fold up into a little box and hide. Uh, he has no facial features on his skull besides one right red eye, which has an eyelid. Otherwise, uh, he has these big, large orange staples, kind of like around his jawline, and maybe at the top of his scalp, that keep his skull together. And, and he is sitting down where he should. What a good boy. I know. And Loyal. Loyal is an uplifted dolphin and looks very strange at first glance. If you have never seen one with the kind of suit that he uses to get around, he wears an exopod, which is a large glass pod in this casing that looks kind of insectoid in nature. It's metallic, but the technology used to power it is decidedly alien. He is a bottlenose dolphin with some tattoos on his body. On the chest, it's in the shape of a nautilus. And he kind of floats around in this exopod and has two robotic arms on the front of it that are humanoid in nature, with hands on the front of them that he uses to manipulate his environment, since he doesn't have his own hands. Just has fins, obviously, being a dolphin. But yeah! He's a bubble boy. And he's just floating there <laughs> placidly. Am I right in thinking that Loyal takes up like four times as much space in this room than like any other person? Yes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Because like, dolphins, dolphins are big. Are, yeah. like, they're big. They're like eight feet, nine feet long. They weigh a lot. And then his pod surrounding him <laughs> is full of hyper oxygenated fluid, which he breathes. So he has fluid in his lungs right now. And that's how he is alive in there. I'm imagining a guild navigator, but they're just a dolphin. <laughs> just had it up. <laughs> Pretty close. Pretty close. With you all sat down, or well, three of you sat down, uh, two people enter the room. One is a tall man with a buzz cut, the director of the pilot division, who you know is Kilo Germain. Beside him is a woman that Hex and Loyal you recognize, Nyla Westedge. Uh, Kilo speaks up. He says, uh, my name is Director Germain. I'm pretty busy, so let's make this quick. And he thumbs through some papers in front of him. As you know, the Soul Union has significantly decreased our budget. We've been forced to dismantle a number of squads and form new ones to comply with new regulations passed by the central government. As a result, the people in this room will be your new squad mates alongside a small group of support staff. You four represent a unique blend of backgrounds, with most of you not having seen proper pilot on pilot action for some time, if ever. As such, you will be fulfilling a unique role in the pilot division and all-purpose squad to fill in the gaps in our coverage. And he looks at the papers like he is reading them for the first time. Uh, and he kind of like grimaces a little bit and he says, uh, your handler, Miss West Edge, will be your new control. If you have any problems, you tell her. With our current resources, things are going to be very difficult. And I wish I didn't have to say this, but I need you to know that the only way any of you are going home before this insurgency is stomped out is if it's in a body bag. With that said, our assets still dwarf that of the Clusterists. In an open engagement, it'll be effortless to crush them. The bigwigs up top expect us to get this job done with what we have, and we will. So be efficient, be careful, and look out for each other. You can't count on the Union to bail us out of this if things get hard. Please direct any questions to Miss West Edge. And he exits the room. Miss West Edge takes central stage and looks over each of you. She's a dour woman who has clearly seen some combat in her day. Her right arm is this opaquely bionic, strange synthetic skin device. Kind of top of the line synthetic arm. She stops the folder onto the table and looks it over. And she says... We're sending you into the West City. There's still plenty of clusterist activity there, but they have primarily gone to ground. We need intel on their operations, so we need you to head in there and stir some shit up. Provoke them into attacking you, then capture one or more pilots. If you can capture a leader of some sort, that would be ideal, but we don't know exactly what you'll run into. 
We cannot afford to be seen as the aggressors here. There are too many eyes in the city, so get creative to lure them into attacking you. Alongside you will be support staff, including air support, scout drones, and some infantry and snipers, which you can utilize as you see fit. Rules of engagement are as follows. Do not kill any civilians or unarmed clusterists. Do not excessively damage any infrastructure or non-hostile vehicles, and no preemptive use of lethal force. Any questions? So we're just rolling out there to get shot. Yes. All right. After Guy Skys talks, you just hear you hear a voice emanate from Loyal's exopod after Nightless' initial question, saying, "No questions, ma'am. Thank you." Oh fuck! You're one of those. No <sighs> say anything in response to this. Well, let's get on with it then. <clears throat> what did he mean by this? <laughs> Sorry, I assumed that that was like telepathic communication. Is it like a speaker on the pod that's talking? It is a speaker on the pod, but it is not oh. visible. And anytime Loyal speaks, there is no indication that he is speaking other than you just hear his voice near him. Okay, is well, his I mouth that open statement. and close? When his mouth only opens when he is angry and trying to show his teeth. Oh, okay. <laughs> it doesn't happen often. He All right. prides himself in being a, a nice young fellow. That'd be really disorienting if he like did like the dolphin chittering while like the actual <laughs> voice was coming thinking. out of the the pod speaker because that would be very if like. You get, if you get close enough to him, you do hear clicks and whistles when he's talking. Oh, okay. but you have to be really close to his tank to hear when it. When he's like really pissed off and yelling, does it is it like the full like? Dolphin sounds. Like SpongeBob. Um, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Let's hear. You would make that sound. Th you would make that sound if he was out of the water. If he's in the water, oh, it's just okay. clicks, whistles. All right. Yeah. A uh, Geist gets up and uh, starts like stumping off to. Uh, I mean, I assume that our frames are somewhere. Yeah. So when none of you ask any questions, Control oh. says, "We have your frames ready for you in Hangar G." Head over there and suit up. You deploy in two hours. Yeah, guy starts going. Great. But he kind of looks to make sure that the rest of the squad's following him. <laughs> yeah, Hex kind of is sizing everyone up, giving a strange look over to Adam's character, actually, and then follows suit. Adam's character uh, being Mirage, the robot man. Or you can call me Mirage Joseph. The robot man. You know. Can't stop thinking Joseph. Mirage from Incredibles. <laughs> I've been thinking of Mirage from Apex Legends. I'm thinking of the Mirage tank from Red Alert 2. <laughs> Me as well. We're all on different pages here. Yeah, all that's what pages. I'm thinking. <laughs> so, you all head over to Hangar G, an old logistics warehouse which used to service the city prior to the war. As promised, all your frames are here, uh, ready to go. Also here is Captain Spud, the commanding officer for the infantry groups. And as you approach, he gives a very severe look at Joseph. But he shifts off of that, and he begins to remind you of the resources that will be available to you due to your mission being so close to the Peacekeeper's main base. And he says, yeah, so you've got a lot available to you. You got your scouts, the uh, Sparrows. They're going to be able to scout out targets for you if you need intel. And my guys, the uh, Raptors, they can handle infantry targets if any uh, crop up. And we've got a couple snipers if you need that. Uh, you're going to be the tip of the spear here with your frame, so just tell us when you need us and we'll handle it. You got it. What kind of numbers are you look we looking at for your deployment here? Uh, what got, can you hit precisely? Uh, I've got a couple squad of infantry, and the scouts are uh, just one squad. All right. What kind of capabilities on the snipers? Just anti personnel. Yeah, anti personnel. Nothing's gonna scratch a frame, unfortunately. All right. Well, watch your house out there, buddy. <laughs> he nods to you, and walks off to fraternize with his other infantrymen. Before he walks off, loyal. Says to him, doesn't say anything else, but it's like, are you by chance from the human place of California? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, I was born on mind. Teclar 6. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> City of San Diego. <laughs> your, speech, your, your speech patterns, they're very lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Far out, man. See you around. <laughs> uh, we need to talk about the method you're going to use for this operation. So this is very high concept. You don't do a lot of replanning in this system. You just need to choose a tactic, and there are six main tactics to choose from, really. And then the tactic requires a detail. So, for instance, you got assault, and the detail you need to figure out is the point of attack, 
Deception requires a method of deception. Stealth requires an entry point. Scientific, which requires a procedure. Social, which requires a connection of some sort. And transport, which requires a route. Now, these are very vague intentionally. And obviously, some of these aren't really options here. So you need to come up with a basic idea of how you're going to approach this. Then we're going to do a little narration, and then we'll do what is called an engagement role, which will determine how the action starts. Okay. So right out the bat, I think that maybe deception yeah. is our way to go for this one, yep. just based on the way that the mission is. Because I'm just looking at my uh, playbook gear, and one of the things I can get on my mech is a, uh, a high-quality shield. So maybe some kind of uh, deception plan where basically we find using intel from our scouts to know where abouts the enemy is hanging out. We have Geist go in first and make it seem like he's broken down or something. Just like an easy target for them to pick off a clusterous frame. And then as soon as somebody uh, fires on him, everybody else like jumps out of like whatever nearby positions they are. Or somebody else could be the bait too. But that was just my uh, my first idea. That's my first thought, is that we should basically just do a little ruse, get them to shoot at us, and then that satisfies the rules of engagement, and then we can just go sicko mode and try and go from there to identify a high-value target or, like, a leader or something. That makes sense. Yep. Hmm? I'm here for it. With that in mind, are you sending your scouts in first? I think so. Does this work like Blades in the Dark, where when we're, like, tallying up how many dice we get, for our engagement role, we can like talk about different factors that might help us with the plan. Yes, we're we're gonna do I'm, that right now. Cool, cool. I imagine that they would be one of those, but like if there's like some other procedure for getting them into the mix, that's no. The only fun. thing I was gonna have was have you roll a gather information roll for them to see if they gather any information because they do have a tier, and if oh, you wanna sure. utilize them, I think it would be a good opportunity to try them. Yeah, they are tier zero. Go. So, <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, why is that? Wrong? Yeah. You roll me two d six, and we're gonna take the lower result and see. Like they're not gonna get hurt because of this. It's just gonna be if they can benefit you. Yeah. So is the? Do you know if this? If founder uses the same syntax as roll twenty, can I do like a yes. keep lowest one? So I guess that was. Yeah, you rolled two ones. Holy shit! There's some snake hey eyes. Guys. <laughs> we're off yeah. to a big start. Uh, <laughs> Is that oh, bad? No. They, yeah, they go on bad. and they, they tell you that they <laughs> basically immediately got made and they had to get out of there. Um, so they will not be able to give you an upfront benefit here, unfortunately. I'm going to do a little narration and then we're going to start tallying up the engagement role. Okay, so since the taking of the city, there's been a rudimentary perimeter that's been constructed, isolating the western districts from the inner city and the eastern gates. It's not perfect, but acts of clusterous terrorism have fallen drastically and allowed for civilian life to more or less coexist with the peacekeeper occupation in the city. You proceed through a peacekeeper checkpoint and into the western city. The developed high-rises give way to simple printed structures, narrow streets, and without a doubt, a hostile populace. As you walk through the gates, what do each of your frames look like? And we'll start with Hex again. Sure thing. Hex's mech appears unremarkable and ordinary at a first glance. Its appearance is plain and unassuming, lacking any distinctive or eye-catching features. To the untrained eye, it may even seem boring and unimpressive. However, beneath its unassuming exterior lies a powerful military workhorse, equipped with many redundancies and constructed out of fairly common equipment. Its unremarkable appearance allows his suit to blend in and go unnoticed. Wow, good, good work blending in all the quirks there. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the goal. Uh, okay, loyal. Loyal's frame is made entirely out of this iridescent mother of pearl metal and has an interesting combination of organic and geometric shapes. Is like reminiscent of the ocean. There are decals that look like shells or waves. It looks very similar to Loyal's exopod and the fact that it looks alien in make, but also still decidedly mechanical, and has a lot of rounded shapes. It has a visor that has a kind of melon shape at the front. Still humanoid in face shape, but definitely has some ocean dolphin theming in it as well. And on the back, there is a large shield. Cool. Mirage. My mech looks like uh, an avatar mech, but with double the limb length. 
So just want to picture one of those from the movies. Uh, and then the cockpit is more angular. It's kind of like one of the Halo cryopods that Master Chief starts in. Uh, you know how he like lays in that thing? Like Joseph yeah. isn't sitting in a chair. He's like standing when he pilots this thing. Uh, but it's not full glass on the cockpit. He's just got like, a little tiny window in front of his eyes. Uh, he's got wheels. Maybe like yeah, he probably has two small wheels on each limb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you know, if he falls around, he could he could he could scoop if he needs to. Uh, yeah, also has very sharp corners, and that means spiky fingers, which are kind of like claws, which uh, help him climb. Like and, a gibbon. And, yeah, like a gibbon. <laughs> I'm liking this. Um, and he has a sizable laser on his shoulder, not too big, so he can get around. Uh, and that's his frame called Moment. That's the name of his frame. So it's like we like real kind of chunky and utilitarian. Uh, it's it's pretty thin. It's pretty thin and spindly. Aren't the, the Avatar it, mechs like the chassis like real thick though? Uh, let's let's look at the Avatar mech right it's now. A lot of less sharp angles. The it's Avatar, like a box with these thin the Avatar mech uh, is very broad shouldered. It's not. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's wide. You know what I mean? Did Did you see the toy picture that I put in there? I did. In fact, I'm looking at some right now. Yeah, look at that toy picture. Okay, now imagine those arms, but more of them. I mean, longer. That's kind of my guy. So it looks kind of chunky around the cockpit. Though. Exactly. But he, uh, <laughs> his, his arms are much thinner than his actual All right. uh, fucking thingamajig. That, you know, so the place that they put the people in. So he's not going to catch a Navi arrow, is what you're telling me? He better not. That'd be embarrassing. Catch it with his super long arms before it even touches him. Are the Navi in this uh, universe, Colin? <laughs> yes, oh, but they're God. only for uh, pleasures of the flesh. <laughs> oh, thank God. Season two. I'm wiping them out. <laughs> Geist. Yeah, Geist's robot actually is more like Sunlith's, I think. It's more like Loyal's. Um, so he's driving the XV388 Changeling, which is, I mean, it's it's like an R&D prototype, and it looks like it. It's very, very, it's humanoid proportions, but it's extremely sh sleek. A lot of shaped plating. It's like almost halfway between a mecha and a, like a Harrier jet, in the sense that it, it looks like it was very much uh, designed for speed and to be very aerodynamic. And it has very, very large jet engine, like air intakes on the front and then exhaust uh like little jet boosters on the back. And I mean, it, it looks like it was designed by like an R&D nerd engineer, like that kind of idea of what looks cool, which kind of contrasts with the uh, very serious way that uh, Geist, how seriously he takes himself. But he is in the cockpit and he's plugged right into it. It's one of the benefits of a primarily cybernetic body that doesn't work so good is that he can at the very least hardwire himself right into his systems. Right. Uh, Before we make the engagement roll, so remind me what your intended way of agitating these people is i think we're gonna use geist as bait unless somebody else has like a better survivability tool i think geist is probably the best bet the the force field doesn't function as armor but it says that it can affect your position so presumably it can make me a lot safer when i get shot at by that opening salvo i could camouflage near you so that the moment they move to attack i just on camo and fuck them up that would be ideal to have everybody isn't um isn't joseph an infiltrator joseph is an infiltrator yeah does do you, does he have any sneaky <laughs> where abilities? Are you, Adam? i'm looking for my phone i don't know where it is <laughs> Lost it. he's in his frame he's in I'm his kidding. gibbon <laughs> i dropped my my phone beneath my frame seat and it's gone uh, I hate it when that yeah, he's an infiltrator. <laughs> Do you have any stealth abilities? Because I think that the closer we can have everybody to wherever Geist is when he gets shot at, the less dead he will be at the end of this entire exchange. I think I have some some goodies. The, the fine optical that. camo we can that would like probably allow you to remain cloaked somewhere nearby. Basically, yeah. how this works is we just decide what our plan is, and then we make our engagement roll, and that determines how well it works. So, if our plan is to have everybody nearby who can be hiding, which is probably uh, loyal and sorry, what's Joseph's call sign again? Mirage. Is it Mirage? Yeah. So if we can have loyal and Mirage cloaked nearby ready to go and then when things get hot they'll be right there and geist doesn't have to like wait for everybody to show up to have backup i don't know about hex hex is probably just gonna have to like stand behind a building well he's he's fairly innocuous right that's kind of his frame's whole thing is that it looks pretty normal it does look normal but it is obviously a frame that is true you know, frames are like 20 feet tall at minimum so <laughs> um yeah. 
Mirage, um, oh. you are declaring fine off the camo so that you can stay hidden. Um, I am. Cool. So we'll set that up. And Geist, you're kind of stomping down the road, hoping someone takes a shot at you, right? Yeah, basically. I think maybe we could, like, play act a little bit. Like, he can just, like, fiddle with his joystick so it looks like he's having, like, motive system problems or something. Mm -hmm. Just kind of, like, fake like it. He basically just to make himself a more appealing target and be like, oh, no, my... My legs aren't working and my shields are down. I hope nobody <laughs> shoots a recoil his rifle at me. I'm All an stuck in this dryer. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> <The> elevator <Exactly>. closed. <laughs> uh, okay, let's get to the engagement roll. So, engagement roll. You get 1D for plain old luck. Um, the next question on the list is, is this mission bold? I'm going to say not particularly. Is the mission especially complex? I would say also no. Does the mission exploit the target's vulnerabilities? Not uh, particularly. I mean, it depends how you view it. I mean, what if they're opportunists? That, that makes them a little vulnerable, you know? Their vulnerability to attack soft military targets. I don't know if that... Um, yeah, I don't know about they're that. They're victims of their own really... greed. Uh, it's, it's kind of philosophical. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's going to work. Is the mission's tactic <laughs> ineffective against the target? No, I don't think it is, because, you know... It's not. Are you receiving external support for the mission? Yes. You are being helped. You have a bunch of support staff with you. Is anyone interfering with the mission? No. Are there any other factors that affect the mission? Um, is a tier, there's a big tier difference here because of all the support you have. Um, and you're very close to like a checkpoint. I would say that you're like maybe a kilometer away from it at this point as you are like trying to draw them out. Um, so, you're going to get three dice for your engagement roll, which is a very Ooh. good situation to be in. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, who wants to roll it? Not me. Somebody else should do it. What's the syntax? I'm happy to. Slash R space 3D6. 3D6. Let's see it. OB. That's not great. Ten. That's oh, yeah. It added. Big number. Well, you got a five, which is a partial success, good. which puts you at the beginning in a risky position. So. Let's set this up for you a little bit. As your frames move through the streets, pieces of debris, chunks of concrete, bottles, and rotten foods are thrown at you from windows uh, where people live. You know, people live in this part of the city. They all ping harmlessly off of you, so there's no damage. But as you continue, eventually the people go inside, and the plinking of debris is replaced with an eerie silence. Your ground teams report this as well as they are trailing behind you. A haze warning pops up, and communications cut off. Your, your scouts' drones, which they've been using to scout ahead, lose reception and coherence. And one by one, your links back to the home base start to get cut, cut off from the haze. And for those of you who need a reminder of what the haze is, it is this field that is very easy to use and is kind of the reason the frames are so popular that affects remote controls and communications and most like signals and tracking systems. Uh, it typically means shit is about to pop off when the haze goes up. You know, in front of you, someone is like honking their car horn at you still. And as this is all going down, you detect a number of heat signatures lighting up at once. There is one in a parked truck just ahead of you, maybe like, I don't know, 200 feet. One in the sewers beneath you. There are tunnels that run underneath the ground. And there's at least one or two in a warehouse building just to your left. Um, and it looks like you have a slim margin to act first, but it's going to be very dependent. What do you do? Don't we... Okay, so I... This is probably something that Geist would know, but I do not. Mm -hmm. Is like, what are the... So we were told to allow them to shoot first. Do I have to wait for, like, bullets to start pinging off my frame before I deploy my anti-infantry countermeasures and shred these people? Or, like, is the deployment of a haze field and the letting up of he's signatures enough of an act of aggression that I can be like, all right, let's fucking go. You haven't been on deployment for a while, but in, I would assume in Geist's opinion, this is enough justification to Geist. <laughs> uh, like, if there was media here and they saw you just go, well, I'm going to shoot into this building now, they might not see it the same way. Alan, I have a, a universe question. Sure. So, does the, the haze disrupts comms, right? Or yeah. did I mishear that? that so. Do we have body cams of any sort? <laughs> or the equivalent? Um, because what I'm seeing is... Turn my body cam off. Is, uh, your there is no record anymore, so why Zach and why Zach? 
Yes. <laughs> so you are not required to have body cameras on because, you know, you're soldiers. You do bad things. But that's not a guarantee that other people aren't recording. Okay. Well, up and, to and you, Isaac. You know, there are, you know people live in this district. There's a guy in front of you in his car honking at you. Um, so just keep that in mind. I think Geist is not going to go sicko mode just yet. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna wait. He's gonna wait now. Maybe I I uh took cold instead of vicious as my trauma, so I'm gonna say that here it keeps him cool. He's gonna wait until he really has justification to go off. Sorry, right. where did you say the other heat signatures were no. other than the truck? So there's one in the truck, not the one honking at you. But there's oh, like a different part truck. to U-Haul, basically. There's one underneath you in some tunnels. And there okay. are two in a warehouse off to your right. Okay. They wouldn't attack us with their own civilians around. I we'll think they out. would. Would they? Reading the, the well, brief, it do, seems like that's they started. I think they, they would. St yeah, they started going real uh, crazy under new management. They've been doing some real nasty scorched earth tactics, right? Yeah. Oh, they have. I think so. Yeah. I mean, do, do we have no communications between each other because of the haze you, field? You have enough communications between each other. It's just longer range ones are the problem. It's like you could get a message to your industry, but it'll be very indistinct. Okay, cool. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm it, going to. Sorry, go ahead. Is my sonar impacted by the haze field? One of my quirks is that I have 360 sonar. I don't know what the range I, is on it, that. I guess it, it depends is, on the haze. It, it depends on the haze and how well you roll, ultimately. But mm -hmm. so, like, if you roll badly, then yes, it's affecting it very much. Uh, <laughs> gotcha. uh, but I would say baseline, it affects it a little. You are not going to be crippled 100% unless you roll badly. Sure. I'm going to, um, Geist is preparing to be fired upon, but uh, he just basically sends out a message of, I mean, he assumes that everybody can see the heat signatures, but so these heat signatures, would they be heat signatures for vehicles or like what, what does that sort of scan generally indicate? Are they just, do people ping off that kind of thing or is it specifically like a It's definitely hardware? like hardware. Uh, the one okay. in the warehouse is more indistinct. That could be one or two. If you're not sure um, without okay. like a roll of some sort. Yeah. So I'm just going to prime up. I'm checking off one load to uh, say that Geist is priming up his fine force field. Um, but he does not fire at the truck, although he really wants to. You could scan. That is true. This version of my mech is quite good at scanning. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if I can get find out a little bit more about these targets. So he, I, I basically, I wanted to determine which one seems most the most impressive. So I'm gonna go ahead and scan. risky standard. Well, this fuck me. No. So on a three or two, you do a full failure. You do not get a partial success. You scan and you kind of notice it too late. You know, the other heat signatures are kind of moving a little bit, but the one in the tunnels isn't moving at all. And you scan and you're like trying to determine if there are any more targets around you. And then you realize the reason it is not moving at all is because it's a decoy. And you realize it's too late as the ground caves in around you and a big hand grabs your frame's leg and yanks you into the tunnels underneath the ground. You're now in a desperate position. Okay. Um, so under the entry for shield or force field, it says it does not count as armor for reducing damage, but can alter position. Does that, I guess it probably doesn't mm. do anything for me here because I am not being harmed. I'm just being grabbed, which the force field would not be able to really. What, what is the description of the force field? Like, what does it do really? Um, so, I mean, the description is a pilot directed thick alloy plating or electromagnetic barrier held at a distance from the vehicle's body to protect it from incoming attacks does not count as armor for reducing damage, but can alter mm. position. And I have a fine one. I would means say it tier one instead of zero. right now it is not going to help you because you're being grappled, but remember that you have it when you do get yes. shot and it will affect your position. Absolutely. I will do that. Uh, uh but yes, I am not going to hurt you yet, but you are in a desperate position now as you are separated from your teammates and you are in a grapple with you can't really tell what it is. It's definitely a frame of some sort. Everyone else, who wants to go next? So, okay. to, to paint the scene for you, if you want to decide what to do, I know Loyal and Joseph were crept up a little bit, and I think Hex was hanging back, mm -hmm. but your point man has been pulled into the ground. Into the table, like the ground is like a sinkhole almost, and a hand yanked him down. And you also know that there are two more frames, at least, maybe three, uh, ahead of you. Like, that's been conveyed to you by Geist. So you could attack those if you felt that it was now appropriate, or you could do something else. You could try to help Geist out as well. 
Geist, I can talk as a free action, right? Yeah, absolutely. As Geist gets pulled down, he'll yell something along the lines of, I'm fine, deal with the rest. Hex heard that loud and clear. He wants to survey the area to find those other frames. You, you actually know where they are at this point. Okay. Um, as part of your like, risk position, you know, unless you want to look for more things that you might want to worry about, that could be a survey. Um, it'd actually be a scan since you're in your mech, just so you know. Those bottom two categories are going to be your mech skills for the most part. Okay, so that's going to be manipulating scan. Okay, well, I want to scan just to see what Hex is getting into. Wow. Oh, I failed. I don't know how to use this computer. <laughs> yeah. These, these, uh, oh, you only have one die. Hex, always the cautious one, decides to go for another scan. And as you are scanning, you notice that there are some people on top of the occupied residential building farther down the street, and they fire a recoilless rifle at you. And it barely misses you. Barely. Uh, but now, not only are, is Geist in a desperate position, you are all in a desperate position until these um, anti-tank crew on top of the building are taken care of. Surprise! Yeehaw. Could a destruction tools be my drill? You could just do... This is a melee weapon, ultimately, right? So you're going to select... Actually, selecting a melee weapon would be the, the choice there. Yeah. So. I want to... With whatever my turn is... Drill the hand that's grabbing Geist. Sure. Um, that is going to be a battle. Mm -hmm. um, in this system, you can push yourself by exhausting a quirk if you would like to do that. Um, what pushing yourself and exhausting a quirk means is that you check off one of your quirks from your list, and you get a plus one D or greater infect to your roll. Yeah, I want to use ominous appearance for this, but since this person's like in the tunnels when I'm trying to attack them, are they seeing me like how much of them is buried right now what's their field of view can they be swayed by my ominous appearance as i'm going in with this drill um they might not be but there are other people looking at you as well who you could say would be affected sure check it okay. off and I'm then i'm gonna do plus one b appearance. okay uh so you're gonna roll a battle roll it is going to be a desperate Our standard goal. roll and you're going to get plus one d let's see what happens with this drill wow oh no. How many failures in a row is that now? That's three failures in a row. That was bad. We're not we're not bad a great intel. first mission. <laughs> <laughs> they should be up. here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, you go in to try to drill this hand. Sorry, Geist. But <laughs> you, I think you might get tunnel visioned a little bit um, as all of a sudden there is a, a heavily modified pitchfork is thrust into just below your cockpit, barely missing you. Um, you know, like, all the alerts suddenly flash red on you, and you are forced up and to the left into, like, this large truck access alleyway as a frame uh, barrels through you and impales you. And you're going to take the level 2 damage impaled. And I resist being impaled. <laughs> yes, you can resist being impaled. And you can resist. also check off armor to reduce effect as well. I would like to do that, checking off armor. Okay, so you've checked off armor, which will reduce this to level one. There's going to be another consequence as well, which is that you are going to damage some buildings as you are barreled over here. And because of the unfair mainstream media, you will be blamed for this damage. Um, so you can resist the level one damage you now have, or you can resist that, or you can resist both, but they have to be resisted separately. Uh, I want to resist falling into the buildings. So, you know, check them all off. You're out of quirks, and you are now have the level one damage stabbed. Well, you used all four quirks? Yes, because Ewan has a oh, one dot it. in prowess. It costs... But actually, that'd probably be expertise. This is a vehicle action. Okay. So you're going to have one quirk left. So choose whichever one you want left. That's good to know. I'm going to keep my camo. So... Geist is underground. Loyal has been attacked by one of the warehouse mechs and pushed off into a side alley, but definitely stops from destroying a small, cute cafe. Which leaves Joseph. You are the only one who has not made it in action yet. I want to shoot my laser if Where? I can, preferably at the thing that's attacking Loyal. Okay. Just so you guys are, remember, there are guys with recordless rifles on the roof that are why you are in a desperate position. We could I call our snipers and do it. I want to save my friend. Yes, you can call in your snipers, and that won't take up an action. All right, I'll call do that. Him. Call them back up. Beep, beep, right. beep, beep, beep. So, hey, snipers. Work? Roll me a d6. Oh. Oh, okay, that's a. 
I thought we were role playing it. I'm sorry. Well, uh, we'll role play it once we see how good you do. Check this out. <laughs> Every time, are you fucking kidding me? This that's not these dice weighted. <laughs> oh, you got no bars. Oh. Back here. You got no self um, reception. That's not good. This shit. So oh, yeah, you you call into the God. snipers and you're like, "What do you say, Joseph? What what are the words you say to the snipers?" Everyone's getting owned right now. We need some help. We're on it. And there's a large explosion in the background <laughs> and screaming. Uh, and <laughs> They'll be fine. Your cohort is going to be now damaged. This but now you insane. now you get to actually do things, Joseph. Now I can shoot my laser. Now you can shoot your laser at the the impaler. I'm ready to shoot my fucking laser. Is that just a one d six? What is your battle score? My battle score is zero. I don't have anything in battle. Um, I could be persuaded that this is a bombard, since you're staying back and you're cloaked. Yeah, sure. One would say you're bombarding with this laser. Yeah, I don't think anyone's on you yet, so I think you get a bombard without having to... Should I just click bombard? Yeah, you click bombard, and then you're going to... Position is desperate. Effect is desperate. standard. Yeah, okay, five. It's, like a five. it's not a one. Yeah! Partial success, <laughs> um, which means you fire your cool laser rifle. Um, and it bisects the uh, mech on top of Loyal. Uh, molten metal like drips onto your mech, Loyal, but does not harm you as you are now freed from this bad situation. But unfortunately, because you were so focused on getting a good shot out, Joseph, um, one of those recoilless rifles does hit you exploding on you um and you take the level three harm exploded ouch no i resisted exploded yeah so um, level three is very bad yeah uh, seems that there's three of them here that's you should probably resist that and check off armor because you'll be really fucked up if you just eat that so you do that idea. and now <laughs> you are going to try to resist this which is going to cost three perks so you're going to check off three of your perks on those little checkboxes, and those are going to be used up for this session uh, to avoid this damage. We're getting our asses fucking beat. So you're going to get the level one harm, which you write in... The, the harm thing? It's, it's under damage, actually. It's not called okay. harm for a mech. So level one damage, and I would call this concussed, because like most of the damage doesn't hit you. It hits next to you, and like your sensors get all scrambled, which means you're going to have less effect on your next roll. Uh, that's the situation. Pretty bad so far. I know what I want. I want to do something really silly because yeah, I think it's cool. You, it's your go. Go for it. Be cool. Silly. Um, so I'm going to check off. What I want to do is I want to check off two pieces of gear. I'm going to check off my uh, form specific gear for uh, this transformed version of my mech for fine motives, uh, fine mobility suite rather. And then I want to check off one other piece of gear, f which is a piece of generic gear for a grapnel system. And what I want to do is I want to shoot the grapple into the guy who's grabbing me, and then I want to fly straight up into the air. <laughs> okay, I'm down. Could, I, could that be a maneuver to just, like, bust the fuck out of here? Yeah, I'll give that to you. Can I also check off boosted reactor for increased effect when speed or agility is required to say that I just fucking, like, just, like, put the pedal all the way down and, like, explode out of the ground with this guy attached to me? I don't see why this not. Is... Okay. Here's my question. <laughs> Before yeah. you roll, are you more attached to getting out of here, or are you more attached to attaching this to him? Will this determine what dice I use? It will determine the result. Okay, yeah, I think I'm more more determined to get out of here, because I can always just fly over and paste the dudes on the rooftop if I'm not fighting this guy. Sure, works for me. Let's maneuver. Um, I think... So my... Does that put my effect to great because I'm using my... Boosted reactor. Yes. Desperate Does great. Does the... Cool, desperate great. This is good shit. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to also exhaust uh, my roaring fast quirk for one extra die on this. Okay. Sure. Shit. Because um, we're going fast, and I really don't want to be stuck in a hole with this guy, and... Who knows? Maybe if it goes well, I can, can just fly up real high. Extra effect when you push yourself. Remember I... correctly. Do so. Hold on. Let me. I think there's an ability that does that, but I don't think I took it. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, that's uh, adaptable. Yeah. So I, I don't. Um, yeah, I don't get that. I took the transformer one instead. So it's just one. 
die. Um, great effect. Let's see what happens. Please don't fail. I'll be really sad. Ooh! Whoa! Critical success! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I don't know if I ever got one of those, even the whole time we played Blades in the Dark. Oh yeah. Also, whenever, yes, you must have. Whenever you guys roll a desperate um, roll, you're supposed to mark experience in the corresponding skill category. So, for instance, if you yes, rolled, I remember that a desperate scan. Um, you're gonna. Under Acuity, there's these little tabs on the right. You're going to click one of those for each desperate roll you rolled in that category. Oh, yeah. So these snipers are like an XP farm. Um, yeah. I have bad news. I have a proposition because I was already at great effect. So now this is I don't. It's one step above that. Okay. Can I say that Geist flies up and fucking swings this dude in, at the snipers and then lets go with the grapnel and throws him at them? I think that's a good idea. I love this. I love this. I do like that idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you... Like, not only do you grapple onto it, you manage to wrap it around him before you blast off. Uh, kind of like a lasso. And you shoot up into the air. There's a burst of rubble and dust. And no one can really see where you are because no one looks up ever in life. Um, <laughs> but then, you know, the... Fucking recoilless rifle people see a shadow fly over them just in time to see one of these large frames, which are um, the ones they're using are like these modified agricultural frames used for like loading hay. Um, <laughs> and it's just flying at them at Mach 1 and just collapses on top of them. And because you're such an expert at everything, the Cable snaps the frame in half, preventing it from destroying the building they are on top of, just scratching the roof, while also turning everyone on top into a paste. Man, we really got to get the ability that allows you to, like, cause collateral damage without consequence so we can start throwing people through skyscrapers, because that would be cool. But yeah, Geist is fucking loving it. He fucking explodes out of the ground at, like, 100 miles per hour, um, whips this guy at the snipers, and he's just... He's like he's probably laughing maniacally inside his frame, but he doesn't have his uh, like his comms active, so nobody else can hear it. But he's having a really good day, really good day. So I can hear it in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up, I think we're gonna have Hex go. You are no right. longer in a desperate position. You're on a risky position because the missile people have been taken care of. Um, there are two frames now. That have emerged, one from the warehouse and one from the um, truck. And the one from the truck looks a little different than the rest. This one is a more model, uh, modern model of frame used in kind of construction. It has a what looks to be an adapted nail gun and mm -hmm. a big heated sledge, which is used for pressure welding uh, joints on buildings. Oh, that's the boss. We got to take him alive. This is the boss. All right. Net, that makes all the rules. <laughs> all right. And then the and other one is any... just one of those yeah. modified um, farm equipment. This one has like a mining laser of some sort welded to it. Okay. And so I can just check off a quirk and like assume that's like a piece of gear that he's using that falls under that category, if I'm understanding correctly. So quirks you check off to push yourself where okay. appropriate. So you'd say like. I don't know. Your military workhorse is just good at, like, getting through the shit. You check it off, you get an extra die. Um, mm -hmm. But for equipment, you want to go to the mech load tab and then hit the plus sign there and mm -hmm. add, you know, whatever gear you're using. Like, if you're using a machine oh. gun, you would check off. I think it's just called machine gun. Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. I'm taking a look at all these. I was wondering where to find this. Um... How about, and are some of these class specific or playbook specific? Guys? Yes, Most of the letters are. next to them indicate what playbook they're specific to. Ah, beautiful. Okay. And the ones without, I assume, are just standard. That's correct. Okay, then I'm going to assume he has a rack of missiles. <laughs> okay. And um, they're going to like fold out of him portal turret style. Uh, <laughs> 
and open fire on the smaller mech that isn't the boss because we need to take the other one alive. Okay. Great. Um, that sounds like it's going to be a battle roll. Yeah, let's do it. Battle. And, and it's boom. risky standard is your position. Sick. And in a stark contrast to Wyzak, his cockpit, really quiet. Hex, nothing going on. Just quiet. Bird sounds. <laughs> and it's a partial success, you know? It's his first combat. Great. Baby's um, first. So, you open up with your missiles on this frame, and they hit on target. Uh, they splash across the thing, knocking off all sorts of welded on plating. It doesn't, like, make it blow up, but it's completely crippled, this mech. It has been more or less uh, knocked out of the fight. Like, one of its legs falls off. It's like mining laser overheats, and it's like just melting down on itself. However, you did just fire missiles in a residential neighborhood. And one of them <laughs> goes careening into one of these multi-floor buildings, and you see it explode inside of it. Glass comes like flying out of it, and moments later, you see like a woman run out with a child in her arms, just like screaming. You can you miss one. You can resist this. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, you can resist this consequence if you would like. Let's see. Okay, uh, cool. In this case, then... I would call this an acuity resistance, which would cost two perks to prevent you from causing this collateral damage. They're in a combat zone. Whatever. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I like my perks. <laughs> okay. Um, they are there to be spent, though. I think, do they automatically come back at the end of a mission? You get a free maintenance action in downtime. You have to spend material okay. to do it, but you still get it, so... They're pretty cheap perks. If you cause this collateral damage, Hex, you will fail one of your rules of engagement for this fight. Hmm. Okay, then you and know the what? I'll resist it, judge you. and I'll, check, I'll uh -huh. check off military workhorse and common parts. Beautiful. So instead of no fortunate it careening into the building, you put in some new commands to the missile, and it just shoots straight into the ground instead of hitting anything important. You blow up a mailbox, which will not count against you. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking with the males of federal offense. <laughs> yes, you did not kill a child. Congratulations, boss. Um, <laughs> next up, um, Loyal, you have been ungrappled because the person who's on top of you has been split in half, presumably dead. That's great. So what is the combat situation at the moment? Uh, right now, down the street, there is a big mech. The boss is, is here. Th the boss, presumably. Uh, and you get a mm -hmm. weird vibe. You particularly get a weird vibe from this frame. What flavor? Flavor of vibe? Spicy. It's like, there's. Mm. you look at it and you feel like a prickling in your, your melon. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. Prickling in my melon. Delightful. Some, some okay. psychic fuckery is what I will say. I don't, I don't like that. I was going to say that I wanted to use a hollow projector to, like, put some sort of decoy image away from this city street that we are fighting in to lure Mr. Prickly Melon away from the civilians so he can fight someplace else. But if he's psychic, I don't think he's going to fall for that. So are we like in active combat right now? Could, I, could we fall back to a less heavily populated area? You could try to. Geist will not. He's, he's in it now. You'd have to work really hard to convince him to stop now that his blood <laughs> is up. Especially because he's, like, way high up in the sky right now. Yeah, you may not even be able in, in comms yeah. range of Geist. Uh, also, Good. I've added a new Point. clock to the sidebar um, underneath Insurgency de Defeated. It's called the Silver Sun, which is the name of this mech, and you need to fill this clock to beat it. And this is basically like a health bar. In relation to me, how far away is he? Well, you were in an alleyway, so I would say a few, mm -hmm. hundred feet away. I mean, they are approaching rapidly. Not you, probably. The people who are like in the middle of the street, in my mind, are Joseph is at the front, and Hex is a little farther back. I'm and you cool. are across from um, Joseph. I want to make myself into an appealing target. I will try to not do a hollow projector. I will just do myself. I want to activate my shield and start flying. I want to fly, like, sort of not directly at Prickly Man, but adjacent to him. So I'm in the air above the civilians coming at him sort of like strafing him to get him to engage with me and go away from this place sure that sounds like a maneuver to me yeah 
I sure. think so. All right. I am doing a maneuver. I don't have any more quirks left, so I'm not pushing so, myself. Since you are using a risky... uh, shield, I'm going to give it to be risky standard. Excellent. All right. Let's roll this shit. Success. Yay! Yay. Cool. Um, cool. I'll take it. Great. So you, you skid out from the alleyway and do some evasive maneuvers to try to draw this frame away. And you do manage to succeed. The frame kind of turns its be like back to the side a little bit towards the warehouse they came out of, which you know now to be uninhabited. Uh, it's just like empty and some boxes in it. We'll give you plenty of room if you keep them inside of this warehouse. And so you do accomplish that. Because of that, I'm going to tick, I believe, I believe it's two segments for a risky success. Um, the downside is in order to accomplish this, as you kind of do a close pass, um, they lash out with their hammer and it smashes into the side of... Actually, you have reduced effect, so it's only going to be one mm. tick because you are harmed. You manage to draw them out, and you're going to take the level one harm banged up. Banged up, and I, to resist, I need to use a quirk if I wanted to. Yes. And I don't think I'm going to, so I'm going to be banged up because I have one more slot for level one harm. Okay. Correct. Yes, and they don't stack, cool. so... You know, as long as you awesome. don't get another level one harm, you won't get up to level two. Joseph, you see this happen. The, the, big, the big frame has been moved into the warehouse out of civilian reach. Uh, Geist is up in the air. I think maybe coming back down. And <laughs> Yeah, you just saw him explode out of the ground after the guy <laughs> grabbed him, and he's just gone. He's probably fine. <laughs> and, uh, That's what he's doing. Yeah, X, X just took out a frame that was just off to your side. So there's only one. Yeah, where's the last right frame in front of me? Um, I'll uh, head to your right in a warehouse, kind of facing down with Loyal right now. Oh, shit. This is the guy we gotta capture. All right, well, I'll walk into the warehouse, I suppose. And yeah. um, and then what? I suppose, uh, is it, uh, maybe I could, like, I don't know, incapacitate this guy by shooting him in the legs or something, so then his, his frame can't really move? Sure. Yeah, we're going to do another bombard, but this time an interior bombard Sure. inside a warehouse. Do you want to push yourself at all, or you just want to do it raw, baby? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it raw. Let's do a raw bombard. All right, roll it. Your position is risky standard. Risky standard. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> just there the game, everybody. Yeah, so that's a one, by the way, for listeners. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? So you are aiming down, like using your arm stabilizers to get a nice clean shot on the legs of this mech, and you don't notice it so much as Loyal notices it. That weird tingly feeling, it feels like a very violent uh, gust of wind blows, and just like seamlessly kind of somersaults over you, Loyal, and throws you in the path of this laser bolt. Um, and it hits you instead of the Silver Sun is the name of this frame. And so, Loyal, you're going to take the level 2 harm um, bisect... Well, not bisected. That's too severe. Uh, <laughs> melting. Laser. You're melting. Benevolent yes. GM. Uh, I, I am going to resist this. I'm going to use and my intermittent optical camo. Sure. Uh, so you can burn the rest of your... Okay, here's the problem. Yeah. If you resist this, it's going to take it down to a level 1. And since you're out of level one slots, it's going to take it back up to a level two. Oh, so I get minus one dice no matter what. Since you have a shield, I will have it fully negated for the, from this resistance, but you're going to be out of quirks. Yep, I'm going to be out of quirks. Yeah, so... Also, I could save that little cafe. Yeah, also you could... I mean, save the cafe. Hey, you save the cafe. It's worth it. I'm sticking to the mission, guys. Um, so, <laughs> Joseph, the book you know, you have the, the shot lined up perfectly, and then by all accounts, it should have hit, but for some reason, the pilot of the Silver Sun was able to anticipate your attack and causes it to bounce off of Loyal's force field instead, it which is a little cool. annoying. Ah, uh, Geist, I think we're back at you, Okay. Right? I had, I think so. Wait, has Hex gone this rotation? Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. I forgot that he went first. Yeah. Are there any uh, skylights in this warehouse, perhaps? Sure. I think it's like you can see this fight happening through the slits in the skylights. There's a lot of them. 
Cool. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to dynamic entry fly through the roof. And I'm thinking I want to try a repeat of the grapple trick just to like throw him into a wall or something. Or his mech looks, his mech's not a piece of shit, right? Like this one looks a little bit nicer, like better made. No, this is like a, it's a construction mech. So it's not military, but these things are meant to take punishment more than anything. Okay. I and could check off okay so it's probably too heavy for me to say grapple it and then like try and like whip it into a wall or something you would definitely have reduced effect okay cool i'm just gonna dynamic entry through the skylight i will check off one of my special ability load slots for a fine machine gun which is something that that's a piece of ace gear um so i'm going to fly down through the uh skylight and basically just um there's like a, a rotary cannon on uh, one side of, I guess I should probably decide if the mech holds it in its hands or not. I like to think that it doesn't. Maybe it's on the back of one of the arms, but he fires a salvo of shells through the skylight to kind of like fracture it. And then he flies straight through it and just uh, basically opens up with a, a fully automatic salvo of uh, fire at the mech as he basically fires his retro thrusters and uh, slows himself down so it doesn't pancake on the floor um would that be a battle be a battle cool let's battle um i got all these quirks left i wonder if i should yeah you know what fuck it it worked last time i'm gonna check off overburdened with ordinance sure maybe this machine gun is twin linked is this just a risky standard yes all right let's get it you That's do it. Success. Yes. 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 So you land, you put off a beautiful salvo of machine gun fire. You know, some of them do miss, but a lot of them hit the target right on. Um, you see them put a little, some of them go through and through, but the more critical components, like the cockpit, they deflect off them. And so now this is two ticks more. That was a fine. I don't know if that matters. That's a, not just a, that's a fine. Uh, machine gun i'll give you an extra tick for that that's <laughs> so fine um <laughs> and after the bullets are all shot the shells land on the ground it's very cinematic because they're very big okay i think after you goes hex hex yeah. yes yeah it's me all right who can i help i mean just given my position like do i have a line of sight on anyone I think you are... It's been pretty dynamic of a fight. <laughs> so right now, it seems like everyone's piling on to the Silver Sun, who's the enemy frame in the warehouse. Yep. All right. I'm going to run over to the warehouse. I don't think movement matters in this, so... No. Okay. Uh, I guess we're all piling on him, though, so I don't want to, like, missile... <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we don't want to kill the guy. <laughs> and none of these bureaucrat ones help us out much here. So I'm going to try a melee weapon except the melee weapon is just a punch it's not nothing uh, crazy you don't technically need to declare a melee weapon if you're just punching but it will give you like less of okay. effect if you don't declare a melee how weapon. about something cooler than that then he like extends his mech's arm which is like plain looking and the equivalent of like an actual size it's a giant fucking steel girder but it it's the mech equivalent of a a Light collapsible stick? baton yeah. <laughs> yeah okay that's cool hell yeah and he's gonna just you know hit him with a little bonk so i'm gonna add the melee weapon to my load and you'd say that's a battle yeah it's a battle risky standard fuck him up oh my First god I, I can't, I can't escape there? partial the partial is where you want you can't really hope for better than a partial i've been getting really lucky which is uncharacteristic for me but like a four or a five is good uh yeah, because it means you've done something criminal <laughs> i would love to see how he manages it in here yeah so you know. a child with a balloon my ball <laughs> so the, 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 the scene is uh loyal has his shield up uh, kind of hiding around distracting um the silver sun geist is you know shooting a bunch of machine gun shots at it joseph is i presuming lining up another laser shot simultaneously you know and then you walk up and you swing your giant baton at this thing. I mean, you're trying to incapacitate it, I presume, right? So you're aiming yeah. at like its sensors or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm not trying to like Titanfall to execute it. <laughs> you, you cave in its sensors on the top of its head, which essentially is going to blind it completely. And it's going to go into like, you know, that it's going to, it's basically done now. 
And as you are, you know, happy that it is over, the sledgehammer comes back and smashes into your cockpit. Full strength, and you're going to take the <laughs> level two harm caved in. Okay, and is this where I could try resist? Yes, you could. All right. I want to try re uh, redundant systems here. I'm going to check that off. Or do I have to check off multiple? You. This is going to be an expertise resist, so you're going to check off two. Okay, and innocuous appearance. Now I have a giant scar, so that's all justified in my head. Sure. All right. Um, so there. And so that's going to become level one harm dented. Hey, it'll buff right out. It'll buff right out. <laughs> but after that, you did fill up the silver sun clock. So the silver sun is deactivated. It is. It's down. What do you all do now? Your next step here. Uh, I think um, once the mech stops moving this would actually be an excellent time to slap one of those like to slap the uh the bureaucrat thing the lock on it oh uh, to make sure that it doesn't do that hammer bullshit again yeah you know my my excuse me inventory better than me let's see bureaucrat. We're, not, we're not in turn order anymore just so you the inhibitor clamp yeah uh clamp. yeah well, one thing about the inhibitor clamp is i is it vehicle gear yes uh a device that locks out the startup sequence of a vehicle preventing its use cannot be installed when the vehicle is piloted. Oh, this is the vehicle is piloted. Well, it says typically. You need typically. to do something about the pilot. All right, well, can I rip him out? Yeah, squish him. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Kill, Kill him. him. Uh, I, would, I would make that a manipulate roll. All right, guys, pray. <laughs> you don't accidentally fucking squish him? Uh, what is your manipulate skill? It, it, I got a point in it. Should we get the Gibbon to do this? The That's one, I mean, done. rolling That's one die is better than rolling zero <laughs> dice. Okay. Uh, Harold has cool. reached in, and He's his three. poor little skull couldn't take it. <laughs> oh no, he also might fuck you up. Um, yeah, you, I hope it's that. <laughs> can you tell me what, like, is yours a humanoid mech, right? The cockpit in the yeah. chest. Um, yeah. Okay, you, you know, it's not moving at all. And you reach in to grab it, and you start to cave in the cockpit, you know, carefully, because you don't want to pop this person. <laughs> and the hatch blows up. It blows outwards, uh, crippling your hand. But that's not really the main problem. The main problem is that this tiny figure in a piloting suit jumps out, uh, and runs up your arm, and you see... Do you have cameras on your... Yes, <laughs> yes. And you see that the figure slaps what looks to be some sort of mother a patch on the front of your cockpit and your camera starts to go out oh, hell. as it heats up and there is a large explosion as a uh, anti-tank projectile blows into your cockpit like Fuck from that. outside or the patch explodes That's not from outside dance. baby so you will take the level 2 harm i guess shred it okay. as the How tiny little machettes bounce around your cockpit All right, so i'm at level 1 dent and then now shredded all right, cool. Um, actually, this is going to be to you. Oh, so that's a harm instead. Yeah, to you're going to take level two harm. Okay, um, Yeah, cool. you're like slashed up really bad. Um, and one of your cameras is out. And this figure uh, jumps off the back of your mech and is making a beeline for an urban right. environment. And you also see, I'll just let you all know this now that this failure has happened, um, the other pilot has ejected from the missing mech as well. And you don't know where they are, but you do see their ejection port is open. Okay, um, I'm looking at what I can do. I'm pretty sure that I can't grapple this guy without killing him. Can we, like, kick um, him? Um, like, break his bones? <laughs> I would say... Kick him against a wall. Um, just so you... I guess they're a little small, this person. Oh my god, it's a <laughs> goblin! Kill it! Really? <laughs> they're, a little, they're a little small? How old are they, I wonder? <laughs> <laughs> they're, uh... Well, you guess they're young. They're younger. <laughs> it could possibly be. Mm. A fucking goblin. Geist is convinced it's a goblin. <laughs> no, a um, goblin. So Big it would pilot. be it'd be manipulate to try and grab this person without killing them, right? I couldn't see it being anything else. Yeah. I mean it could be I have. That is, of course, assuming you're in your idea. frame. That is yeah. true, but outside of my frame, I don't like I have one dot in struggle, so it's actually about the same. We have an empath. What, what you said you had an idea? Yeah, what? my control what, them. What skill would it be to throw a flare mortar in front of these people <laughs> as they're running <laughs> away that's, to that's blind them so they cannot run into the city? 
Can I eject from my frame and use Prowl to, like, pounce on him? Yeah. Do I gotta wait? Is it turns for that? It's not really a turn order. Um, yeah, okay. I, okay. I, wanna, I wanna resolve really Ewan's first, because Ewan's sure. first. Sorry. <laughs> um, I would probably say that would be a Bombard, if I'm being honest. Hmm. But I don't have a skill in Bombard. <laughs> you might hit him with the flare. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's either happen. we get out of our mechs and apprehend these children physically, or only one of them is the a child. Of killing them terribly. That's the one we're killing. Okay. Yeah, the only one you see these people. is a child. The other one is missing, which is perhaps worse. I mean, okay. who cares about that? We only need the one. Um, Can I scan to try to see where the missing absolutely. guy has gone and then decide? You, not only could you cool. scan for him, you could probably scan to where this. Uh, it's a girl. I'm just gonna come out and say it. This is a little girl that you're chasing. Holy shit! How uh, little? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm scared. Three years old. Why don't you, <laughs> why don't you catch her and find out? <laughs> okay, I'll do that by threatening violence. My one. True What's our man. position? Your position right now is risky, but you're fail, <laughs> fail to <Jesus>. stand. <laughs> wow, that's a two. Okay. Yeah, you know, this is kind of a similar situation as Geist was in earlier. You go to scan, um, and you discover exactly where that person is, um, and it's because they are on the back of your mech, clinging on like a monkey. They're wearing some sort of optical camo over their clothing, and they are trying to get inside of... Actually, not trying to. They are... <laughs> they have pried their way into the cockpit of your suit. No. Is it full of water? Pod. <laughs> I believe the they exopod now? is. Oh god! The exopod has water. I don't believe the Nautilus does. They're going to change your wrong. pH. No, the Nautilus. That's fucked water. up. Uh, so I don't. There's probably not a lot of room for a person in here. Um, but they are in here and they have a high-powered pistol, and they're aiming it at you. And you are now in a desperate position. That is your consequence. Um, and it will be very hard for someone yeah, to help you. Not working now. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Who wants, Joseph, you wanted to go on foot? Yeah, I want to chase the person right away with my prowl, if I what can. What do you look like when you eject? I was thinking maybe he, like, shoots out, you know? He shoots out the top, because he's standing <laughs> upright. So I imagine he, like, yeah. literally shoots up like a firework and then does a little somersault in the air and then lands on the ground in a cool Hell pattern. yeah. Sick. You know? Yeah, let's, let's see that prowl. Oh, I want to see You want to see it. that prowl? You want to see that prowl? Honestly, Boom! It's going to be a Beautiful. five! Oh, that's a success! Yeah, you yeah. fucking like, maybe like kneel down a little bit and you shoot out <laughs> like out of a toaster. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and there's almost an arc to it. And it is, it's beautiful. And you land right on top of her. Like you pin her down with your, like, your legs. And she's like collapses onto the ground. Like her arm is pinned down. Perfect. What, is this a your, child? It's, it's a 14 year old girl. One. That's who okay. it is. Um, and yeah, she is in custody. Tie her up. You know, get her to a vehicle. Who can... Uh, yeah, can I, like, break her legs or something? Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. That's great. Yeah, I guess he's a robot. You can give a shit. Are you okay. Kinda, yeah, I can just say that you broke her legs landing on her. Sure. Maybe I... I that was my trajectory. I was like, just aim for the legs. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you land in, like, the back of the knee where it folds in. And as you, like, uh, feel ugh. something... That's what like, I was hoping for. ...move out of place. Maybe, like, a, f a fracture plus a very serious dislocation. Uh, yeah, she will not be walking Ooh. anywhere. That way I can tie her other hands together and all, what's she going to do, worm away? Not going to happen. Yeah, we got it. Hey. She, is, she is no longer a threat. Perfect. Cool. My dog does that, Adam. Watch out. <laughs> you never or know. Breaks her legs? <laughs> or worms away? <laughs> worms away, he can't walk with his hind legs. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we can... I think there's a piece of vehicle gear for another passenger or some cargo. Actually, I think the bureaucrat, I think Hex can have a, a special <laughs> the, the child case. <clears throat> can I, like, roleplay that as a child case? I didn't know I could do that. I mean, I mean it's, it's room for another character if you want it to be uh, a locked room. Oh, I was I talking mean, about the fine cargo container. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. I mean, you can, you can put her in a cargo container. Yeah, I'll put, her in the, I'll put her in the hold. Put in the hole. We can't let the media see us carting off a child whose legs we just broke, or it's going to be a go. PR nightmare. So yeah, I claim, load her load. Up. I claim the, <laughs> the equipment. We're good. They were just playing tag. Uh, <laughs> so Joseph starts to move 
her towards you. She is restrained. She is kind of unresponsive now that her legs have been broken because she is in a lot of pain. She's like 14 years old. You keep mentioning that. <laughs> so, like, not, not like not like a child child, but you know, okay, that's good. Appropriate child soldier age. You didn't just break yep. the legs of an eight-year-old. That'd be too far. Appropriate child soldier. <laughs> I wouldn't just you know? break the legs, Colin. I'd go all the way. All right? <laughs> What's the lowest you go? Three years old? <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, I'm punching. All right, I'm punching pregnancies. The baby breaker. Yeah. Um, That's okay. But anyways, on to more serious topics than child mutilation. Um, a dolphin is in trouble in Lego City. <laughs> We can't stand for that. <laughs> I don't think anybody knows that. I, Geist is presently trying to secure our exit. Um, I don't know that anybody actually knows that there's a, an angry child in there. Not child. Unless, this is a fully man. Is this another child? This is, this oh, is shit. The, the prickly guy. <laughs> no, it's time the, to the, the, prickly, the prickly guy was the girl. Yeah. Um, oh. Okay. Child maybe has some empath oh. abilities or something. I see. Is it my turn to go? Yes. No, we're not in turn order right now, but okay. I mean, you can also you can tell is... people that there's someone in your frame as well. I'm a little preoccupied. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Maybe I open up a live comms as I'm doing this, but as they are crawling up behind me, I'm situated. How my exopod works is I have an opening in the back of my mech where I just float into it and it just jacks me into it. I'm all plugged in here. There's like wires around me. But one of the features of my exopod is that when I am outside of my mech, it can activate a combat mode where I'm no longer floating at a walking pace, and I can move quickly with these telescoping spikes that come out of the bottom of my exopod and kind of move at will. Like, if you've ever seen a sea urchin move sped up, yes. it's like that, but cooler. Anyways, all of those extend at once hopefully grappling this person who is aiming a pistol at me and i want to attempt to sway them and just psychically and speak out loud with my comms on just stop surrender stop resisting you've lost let's see that roll it's a sway let's see this sway what is my position desperate great Come Excellent. on, psychic Expert powers. powers. I get. Come on, A XP. Powers. No matter what happens, right? Hey! hey! <laughs> All right, you do it. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> yeah, he like points the gun at you. Checks something on his wrist, like some sort of diagnostic. He whispers to himself, "Fuck." He drops the pistol, like in the in between space in your mech, and just kind of crawls out on top and raises his hands up. Renders. God, I really want to just fucking fire a harpoon through his chest so badly, <laughs> but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna not. Guys, seriously consider is like I got the grapple reloaded, but he decides you can aim it too. He's not that psychotic. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if we need to. Um, I guess you're aiming it at me. We're all, we're inside of my mech right now. <laughs> well, he he climbed on top of it. Yeah, he's on top of it now. He's left. Can we? So the could we? We should probably take him too. Probably, yeah. yeah. Can yeah, we both. can we say that the like could a fine cargo container be like a couple of small ones since it's like really high end? Sure, I mean, yeah. But I don't, I don't have a problem with that. A few hundred gems, I just fit two prisoners and they will not escape. You've already, you've already won. Yeah, so I'm not. One of them's like spaghetti, so. anyways. So, <laughs> well, easy to get in there. Yeah, you know, yeah. Very easy to yeah. fold up. Exactly. Yeah, let's load this guy up and get the fuck out of here. Yeah, let's you, do it. You exfil. Um, you pick up your, the, the raptors, which is the name of your soldiers, as well as the sparrows, which is the name of your scouts. Uh, the raptors are short a few men now, and a few of them have some wounds. And Captain Spud fills you in and says, yeah, there was, uh, some serious insurgents, you know, waiting for us. It was really rough, man. So close to the checkpoint. Concerning times, bro. Concerning times. And he gives you the hang loose symbol. As you re enter, um, where is he from again? He's from Teclon 6, Diego. Teclon 6, Diego. Yeah, they have really There's big Teclon waves there. And great space weed. Oh, you know, nice. it's in the um, the Baklanov expanse. That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. I wish I was from there. You could be. Uh, anyways, you get back, um, to 
the base. Uh, you hand over your prisoners to the peacekeepers who handle prisoners for the most part, and you get debriefed. Uh, Nyla West Edge, your controller, looks over everything. Like you all have to make reports, of course, and we're not going to have those be done because I've been. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know she says adequate work mm, rules of engagement were followed that's good uh, two prisoners which is more than I expected though the age could leave something to be desired we thought uh, the silver sun was piloted by someone a little bit older yeah seemed to be in some kind of leadership role or I don't know better quality hardware yeah, clusterous they're not afraid of using children Sick bastards. She nods. Um, and you are let go. Um, you know, you get your commendation. The dusk lights are officially in action. And that's where we'll end for today.